just waiting for the commercial to go off and then we'll start the stream. It's a complete multivitamin infused with delicious natural fruit flavors. Vitafusion found a way to make good for you good. Now it's America's number one gummy vitamin. And the old way of taking vitamins has expired. It's a new day in the world of vitamins. It's called Vitafusion. We make nutrition taste good. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tuesday Fantasy Football Waiver Wire Show that I'm just trying to get off the ground. I think I found a happy medium in terms of time. Um, with the weather getting worse, I'm probably not going to be running outside as much. Probably going to have to go to the gym in the morning or something like that. So I think that Tuesday around 7.30 is kind of where it's settling. Um, gives me enough time to get home, do some things that I have to take care of, and then get on and stream for everybody. So, yeah, that, that seems to be, I think, the plan, at least in the short term. And hopefully that I, means that I will be able to, you know, be more consistent with the stream, uh, at least on Tuesdays. Fridays have been pretty consistent. Um, so far, we've been really... Oh, that was an echo. Able to... Yeah, there we go. Got it. Um, so we'll be able to really have a nice uh, stream set up, nice stream time. I apologize, I, t I talked about in the last stream that I was going to, you know, do some changes to the overlays, uh, have a bunch of edits and stuff ready, but unfortunately, um, yeah, I had a family member in the hospital this weekend, so it um, that ended up not getting done, but hopefully we will be able to... Um, Hopefully that, that's something that will happen in the very near future, maybe as soon as Friday, although during the work week it's a little bit more difficult for me, um, especially this Friday where I'll be out of town. Um, I'm going to try to um, still stream, but I think that Friday's stream is going to be very early. I'm either going to do it like AM, AM, like, you know, like really early in the morning, like something like 6 or 7. Um, or what I'll do is do kind of a vlog kind of style stream where I'll just do it from my phone or something and then put it up on YouTube. Because uh, I don't want to miss time, but at the same time I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be in um, Atlanta for the weekend um, through Monday. So I just wanted to let you guys know the uh, schedule's not changing, not going crazy, but um, a lot of stuff's happening for me. Um, a lot of this is a busy time a year i know it's probably busy for some of you um a lot of weddings coming up so I, i'm going to be including my own so i'm going to be kind of around and doing a bunch of things so um just trying to settle into a schedule we're still going strong it's only week three of the fantasy season we just finished week three of the fantasy season so it's still pretty early but i think that we've got a good you know kind of rapport going we're getting to two shows a week I'm thinking about adding a Sunday show, um, just something to, you know, help me and help you kind of remind yourselves to set your lineups, to be active in your leagues that you're in, because there's nothing worse than being in a league and not really being active in it. Um, so hopefully that, that's all good, and hopefully everybody who, you know, ends up catching this is doing well. Um, so uh, Tuesday stream, uh, this stream in particular is going to are usually shorter. Um, this one's going to probably be real short, like I would say under 30 minutes. Uh, and we're just going to talk about the waiver wire. Um, not going to go into too much weekend review, although I, I think I went 3-1 and one in my fantasy leagues this week. I'm still struggling a little bit in my league of record, I would say. Um, but I, you know, looked through the matchups coming forward. I got a pretty good, you know, couple matchups coming forward. I got a good waiver wire position this week you know i'm i'm feeling cautiously optimistic uh so we'll see what it so we'll see how that goes um but then the thing that uh is coming up in the short term is waiver wire tomorrow is when you put in your next waiver wire coins and we're starting to get to the point in the season where people are starting to emerge interesting names are starting to pop up 
you've had a couple of weeks to see some consistency, some drop off, so you kind of know your positions of strengths and weaknesses. This is also the time you should start exploring trades. Um, I started a little early in the season because I just saw the deficiencies in my team from the beginning. Um, like you already know their deficiencies, but there's some players I thought would come on but haven't cracked it yet. Um, so this week we're gonna. This is kind of off the cuff because I did, you know, some research, some planning for this show. I always do that. I always do. Usually I have the notes of who I want to talk about, what I want to talk about. But this week, especially with how busy everything was, I just thought better to just come in, talk to you guys, be honest, um, and just kind of go off the cuff that way. Um, so I'm gonna do what I did last week. Um, talk about waiver wire projections um, and go in order of need. Wide receiver, running back, tight end, quarterback, and defense. The defense is more of a mm, interesting potential starts this week, whereas the other positions are kind of, these would be players that you can pick up and utilize. Um, last week I talked about some players including um, Travis Benjamin, who had a touchdown, Darius Haver Bay over Marquise um, Whedon, uh, Deion Lewis, who still had a good week this week, James Starks, who was a player that I thought could go, who could be useful if um, Eddie Lacy was out. Eddie Lacy ended up having an okay game, but it was kind of a work back game for him. Um, James Starks got more rushing attempts. He didn't do much with them, but it, it just showed you that he was the person who's going to take that burden, um, and he was the one who's given the opportunity. Uh, and usually that's what fantasy is. It's like you picking the players with the best opportunity. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll win, but that's the statistically right thing to do. Put the players with the best opportunity in your lineup, and on Sunday, more times than not, that will win you the day. Um, but sometimes you have to take risks, and that all depends on your matchup. That all depends on what you think you need that week. So, um, a couple other players. Jordan Reed is a player that we talked about last week who's Still not owned in a whole lot of leagues, but as a tight end, somebody I think who's going to keep growing. Um, Eric Ebron, I mentioned, um, but Detroit is going to get it together at some point, and we're just got to wait to see where that offense clicks. Who's going to be the focal point? What, what they're... Your own three? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's still early. It's still plenty of time to turn it around, and... A lot of people are, you know, have bad records right now because there's been a ton of injuries. I'm sure that's probably hit you. If you're on three, you've probably had somebody go down with an injury that cost you a week. And you really can't do anything about that, but, you know, accept it and know that it wasn't your fault. It wasn't the fault of how you constitute your team. It's just that's football. Um, so, I mean, not much you can do about it, but it also gives you the opportunity to kind of recraft your team, look at the waiver wire, look to see what's out there, and, um, you know, continue to kind of just see what you want to do. Tony Romo, DeMarco Murray is... <laughs> Tony Romo injury, again, probably cost you a week. DeMarco Murray and Philadelphia... Philadelphia, in, as their, their offense has struggled mightily, Philadelphia and Detroit are kind of in that same vein. They'll eventually figure out what they want to do. Um, but DeMarco Murray being injured probably cost you a week. Um, also, DeMarco Murray having like 26 combined yards, but still managing two touchdowns, is just that kind of anomaly. Um, but there's, like, we can talk about that. Um, I'll start with that then. Uh, we've got, since we have somebody in the chat, um, We'll start with the quarterback position. Um, I've been talking about him for probably two or three weeks now, but he's still not owned, like, universally. <laughs> uh, and that's Tyrod Taylor. Um, he's not owned in my 12-team league. He's not owned in my 10-team, uh, like, two of, two of the three 10-team leagues I'm in. He's just not owned. Uh, I picked him up last week in one league that I needed a quarterback in. And he threw three touchdown passes. He's he's supposed to be a game manager, but he has the threat of the run. He basically is Johnny Menzel with better people around him. Um, and the same running ability. Um, the other thing, he's probably in a better offensive system, like, uh, to utilize his strengths. He's a 
rollout passer, he's a pocket passer, he has quick, fast receivers who can get downfield. There's a lot to like about Tyrod Taylor. So if you're in the position where you had a Tony Romo or a Ben Roethlisberger or one of the other five quarterbacks who went down, Matt Stafford had an injury. Um, he played, but he he's clearly not himself. Um, and players like, uh, there are several other quarterbacks who are going down. I'm just trying to think of a few of um, Payne Manning hasn't really been himself. He's not injured, but he hasn't been himself. So there's just a lot of people who are in need of a solid fantasy quarterback, and I'm really surprised that he's still... Actually, last week there was a change of... he Less people owned him. He's 28% of leagues. He should be owned in every league. Because if you look at the overall stats of quarterbacks, like this is just a standard scoring league... Uh, Oh, no, this isn't a standard scoring league. This is a standard scoring league. Yeah, this is standard scoring. In a standard scoring league, all taken players, and you just look at quarterbacks. Tyrod Taylor is a quarterback who's currently fourth in the NFL. Fourth in the NFL over the likes of Russell Wilson, over the likes of Matt Ryan, over the likes of quarterbacks that you're familiar with, like Drew Brees, Matthew Stafford, Andrew Luck, who a lot of people drafted really high, Phillip Rivers, Peyton Manning. If he's the fourth player out of all of those, he should be owned. Uh, it doesn't matter what you think about the play style of Buffalo, he should be owned. Um, traded LaMarcus Mo for Dion Lewis and picked up Palmer. Uh, I don't know if I would have given up Rivers necessarily. I think I don't know. Marcus Miller and the Dolphins offense is, eh. but if you can pick up Palmer, I think Palmer's offense and the Arizona Cardinals are just going to do well this season. I don't know if you necessarily need Dalton, because I don't, I just don't trust Cincinnati's offense, but I think Palmer is a really good replacement for Rivers. If you, even if going by this, in standard leagues, Palmer's the fifth ranked quarterback. So, I know a lot of people, you know, probably got Palmer low, or picked him up like you did, and yeah, he's, he's, he's much better than Rivers currently. I think Rivers' offense is still developing. You have Antonio Gates, who's coming back in a couple weeks. Um, their running game is still kind of working itself out with the rookie running back. Um, so, and then they they have, but Rivers has options. He's got Steve Stevie Johnson now. He's got Keenan Allen. He doesn't have that big deep receiver that most teams like thrive on. Like most teams, who, you have that Des Bryant, you have that Demarius Thomas, a Larry Fitzgerald, a Julio Jones. Um, they don't have that receiver. So that 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 uh, in terms of Rivers, so that that might be one of the reasons I would hold back on him. But I think he's probably, I would put Rivers above Dalton. But until I, I'm proven otherwise, Palmer just has too many weapons. And he's getting more. Um, the running game has been able to survive a couple of weeks um, without their primary running back this year. Yeah, yeah. and the other thing about Rivers is um, he's going to be playing more difficult competition than Palmer. We, th we think about the NFC West as this tough, rugged, defensive-oriented division where the Cardinals are going to have to scrape and claw, but they're playing the 49ers twice this year. Uh, uh, the 49ers aren't that good. Um, they're playing Seattle, whose defense is coming around now that Cam Chancellor's back, but have been giving up 30-plus points a game. So uh, you're talking about a team in a division that traditionally good on defense but has been struggling this year and even the rams have had very up and down weeks um good week last week but how much of that is due to ben roethlisberger going out in you know the second quarter versus how good their defense actually is so i mean rivers is you know in a soft conference but there's the Broncos. There's you know there's a bunch of teams that I think give Rivers a more difficult time, and because Rivers' offense isn't as talented as the offense that is around Carson Palmer, 
I mean, that's not a that's not a bad bet to make. Um, and with Andy Dalton as a backup, I mean, he's Andy Dalton has a receiver that he can go to. He has AJ Green. So anytime you have a quarterback with a marquee receiver, it, it it's it's useful. Eli's value has gone up this year for the sole reason that you know Odell Beckham Jr. is on the field and soon to be Victor Cruz. When you have receivers of that talent level, it makes your quarterback better because you can get a receiver, you know, barely open, and he'll make something of it. Julio Jones has made Matt Ryan a really good quarterback because <laughs> Matt Ryan has a decent deep ball. He's a good quarterback, don't get me wrong, but he'll throw up a pass that has no business being caught, and Julio will fight off two defenders to get it. And um, that really helps in fantasy and I think that makes your quarterbacking situation a lot better because you're actually upgrading to quarterbacks with star power. Palmer has Fitzgerald who's playing like he played five years ago. Dolan has AJ Green who's you know one of the best up and coming receivers in the league. Rivers doesn't have that. He has Keenan Allen who's a slot guy. Who he's, he has Stevie Johnson who's kind of a slot guy. Um, they're quick. They're smaller receivers. They can secure the ball well. But they're not the receiver who's going to out physical and out battle somebody in the red zone. And if you w- want a really good talent, like looking at Cam Newton is there because of rushing. Tyra Taylor is there because of rushing. The rest of the quarterbacks you see are there because they have that physical red zone presence. Aaron Rodgers has been getting the ball to James Jones in the red zone a lot. Tom Brady has Rob Gronkowski. Um, we mentioned Matt Ryan. We mentioned Ben Roethlisberger having just so many weapons, including his backfield. When you have talented teammates around you, it makes you better. Russell Wilson has Jimmy Graham, who he finally started to utilize last week. He also has a great running game and a really good line. So those are all things that make quarterbacks special. And I just don't think Philip Rivers has that in San Diego. Uh, and Lamarcus Miller, I mean that I I might I have him on one team, and I'm even considering dropping him. I just don't see if you could get anything for him, any trade value for him, that's a win. Um, Deion Lewis, the only problem I see with Deion Lewis is um, the Patriots are going to use Deion Lewis and Legarrette Blunt um, depending on the week. Like last week against the Jags, Legarrette Blunt got the ball a ton, um, but. Deion Lewis still was able to get a touchdown. He's still going to be utilized in the back out of the backfield role. He reminds me a little bit of Falk in how the Patriots are going to use him. Um, that was you know a couple of years ago, but Falk was there. Um, get out of the backfield, move the chains, third down kind of specialist back. And I think Deion Lewis could serve that role. It's a role that Wes Welker used to serve, but it is also a role that um, they've utilized out of the running back core um, for a number of years and they haven't had in recent years they've gone to more tight end packages but if they have that in place in New England I think that works yeah that's what I'm saying yeah I think Deion Lewis is going to be more of your back out of the backfield your he's going to secure a lot more catches he's going to be like what Shane Vereen was last year for them um, and what he was he's kind of filling the role for the Giants where he's not going to get a lot of rushing yards. I don't think he'll he'll, he'll... he'll get you a handful of rushing yards, a good amount of rushing yards, but he's going to be targeted at least, you know, five times a game. And in the Patriot offense, five times a game is a lot because they're just spreading the ball out so much. Um, and he's going to get carries. He's not going to be completely deleted with Bobier Blunt back. Um, we saw that last week where he still was the main guy. It just is going to be a week-by-week game plan. I don't think you can count on him to be a number one or two, but he's definitely a flex. And in weeks where you have a buy, pro, a buy at running back, he's definitely worth slotting into your number two spot and expecting, you know, a 10-point game. He's not somebody who's going to, you know, really disappoint you. And, like, this weekend, if he gets a touchdown or two, it's an added bonus. Um, but... Just to kind of go over, you know, get back to where we were. We talked a little bit about running backs. I mentioned Deion Lewis, who, some, like, you've picked up. But other people um, might be looking for a running back for this week. And in terms of, well, oh, this is still all players. Let me just go to all available. Um, like in this league, the Garrett Blunt's available. They're on buy, so it might not be worth picking him up. People have dropped Frank Gore. That's not the norm. 
as you see, 97% of them are still in ownership of him. Chris Johnson is an interesting add. He had a really good week. I, I'm sure some people will add him. I won't be just because Andre Ellington is very close to being back. Um, he's the other weapon that I mentioned that Carson Palmer will have soon. Um, so with Andre Ellington back, uh, Chris Johnson's value kind of goes down. Carlos Williams, if he's available in your week, is a great add because LaShawn McCoy will be out this week. So if you need a running back for this week, Carlos Williams is a great add. Also, the Bills are going against the Giants, who, um, even though they're my team, have had trouble against the run. Um, their secondary is interesting and, I think, developing. Um, so it, it's just a defense that's really not solidified. I mean, John Beeson's very... being Having him as middle line back in, in the place as middle linebacker healthy, it helps the Giants, but I still think that... Carlos Williams, at least last week, showed that he's perfectly capable of handling a full load. And with Tyrod Tiller kind of leading on the running game still, he's a very good add this week. Um, another person in kind of the same vein is Deion Lewis, who a lot of people I think are overlooking, are Lance Dunbar. He had 100 yards receiving this week um, and 10 targets out of the backfield. That's a lot for a running back. Um, Joseph Randall's going to be the one who catches headlines, but he's mostly rostered around the leagues that you're going to be playing in. Lance Dunbar is probably not. Um, Lance Dunbar is like the third one on the depth chart, but he's the third down back. And Dallas is, with Whedon, if anything, showed that they are not the deep threat team that they are with Romo. Romo throws a lot of 15, 20-yard passes. Whedon is a Alex Smith kind of quarterback. He's very dink and dunk. There's not much to the Dallas offense when he's in there. It relies a lot on tight ends, getting you know seven, eight yards, a lot of a lot of rushes with their really good line that they have in Dallas. And Lance Dunbar coming out of the backfield is going to become commonplace. So him as a flex player, even as an RB two, possibly. He's not going to get you rushing yards. That's not what he's going to be in the game for. But he can get you a lot of receiving yards. And in this offense, he's probably going to be utilized in the red zone at some point. Because he's going. To, they're not going to be able to power it in with Randall or McFadden. I mean, they scored this weekend. But they're not, neither of those backs are, you know, sledgehammers. No, neither of them are bruising backs. McFadden, as we all know, is kind of glass. And then um, Joseph Randall is really kind of improvement. Like, he has burst, he has speed, he's got some kind of, you know, he's got a really good first cut. But he's not a dude who I see lowering his shoulder and beating somebody in the interior for the end zone. Both of, and both of the touchdowns last week for Dallas were on kind of slash plays. Even though, one, the, even though Randall's was up the gut, it was both were slash quick hitting plays and not lined up you know, hogs on hogs kind of defensive play, defensive stands. So those are the kind of things that I would look for in a uh, running back to pick up. Um, some of the only other running backs on this list who I'm not going to mention for reasons I'm staying away from, D'Angelo Williams is clearly behind Le'Veon Bell, so there's really no reason to talk about him. Frank Gore is owned in most leagues. Again, no reason to talk about him. Um, Ball Powell, a lot of people have talked about, but... Chris Ivory has said he's 100% and will be back. Sproles, Sproles, like you say, is hit or miss. Um, my problem with Sproles is just that the way Philadelphia's offense has been utilizing Ryan Matthews is in a way that Sproles would kind of be utilized as the pass catcher. Um, they kind of, this weekend, be without DeMarco Murray, they didn't really have a plan, uh, in my mind, but they utilized Ryan Matthews well. Um, Sproles, I don't remember how it, yeah, he had a touchdown, but again, he had a marginal stat line. Um, 17 rushing yards and 19 receiving yards. So, like you say, it depends on touchdowns, and for Sproles... A guy who's not going to be t 
targeted all that much. Um, six total targets uh, um, in the receiving game. And he had 11 rushing attempts. 11 rushing attempts in 17 yards is not good. Um, and he those most of those rushing attempts were because DeMarco Murray was out. He's not going to have that many on a week-to-week basis. And it looks like, from everything we've seen so far this season, that the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line just can't move out people to give their running backs any kind of lane. So it's going to have to be on passing attempts. And if you have a Ryan Matthews, if you have a DeMarco Murray in there, being the third running back, even if in that specialized role, is hard. Um, and much harder when Philadelphia has had to play from behind so many weeks. Uh, so, I, I mean, they have a very good schedule going forward for the next, you know, three, four weeks. But I just think there are better options out there for you. I mean, if you're in a really deep league and Sproles is, like, one of the few options that are available, I mean, he's not a completely wasted option. But in my mind, he's not somebody that I would pick ahead of anybody else. Who's the number one running back in Arizona? Arizona's number one running back is Andre Ellington. Uh, Andre Ellington has been hurt for a number of weeks. Um, he went out, I want to say, the first or second game of the season. Uh, first game of the season and has been out since. Um, they've utilized Chris Johnson and uh, Duke. I forget Duke's last name. I want to say Johnson, but that probably is wrong. Um, as their kind of utility backs. Chris Johnson, CJ 2K, as he used to be known when he played with the Titans, um, had a really good weekend this week. And is, you know, still on a lot of people's waiver wire. He was picked up and spot started by a bunch of people, too. Um, but when Andre Ellington comes back, if he's at full health, he's Arizona's clear number one. And Arizona tends to use one running back. Duke Johnson, they're trying to get in spots. I'm, I'm almost positive that's not his name. Uh, I'm actually going to check now because it's bothering me. Oh, no, it is. David Johnson. David Johnson. Um, he's he's David Johnson at speed. He's got athleticism. He's talented, but he's a rookie, and they're trying to slowly work him into the offense. Their number one is Andre Ellington, but at the same time, you may or may not see Andre Ellington at full strength until at least week five. He's supposed to be coming back for week four, but whether he'll get his full carry load, I would give that another week. Um, but if you're looking for the number one uh, running back, once he's at full strength, it's Andre Ellington. Uh, even last year, um, he played. Andre Ellington played the whole year with a plantar fasciitis in his foot, and he still was their number one running back. He still got the bulk of the carries. He played through injury the whole season, and they still did not ease his load. So... When the offense is at full strength and when Andre Ellington's back in there, he's a really good running back to own. And he could be something very special going forward because of how high octane their offense seems to be functioning. Um, so he's, he's a guy to look for, and he might be a trade target. Um, he, David Johnson has been utilized uh, kind of as the... Because... Um, because Ellington's been down for so much of the season, he's been utilized as the change of pace back. Even though Chris Johnson's a faster back, um, David Johnson, they've used him kind of out of the backfield as a pass catching option. I think he had a long touchdown run, or a long touchdown kind of screen play um, early on in the season. Um, he's got talent, I just don't think he's going to have the opportunities. So if you're if you you have a if there's waiver wire availability of another running back that we've talked about already, I think David Johnson's a safe drop. Um, but if you you know have some depth, it might be worth keeping him just to see how Andre Ellington comes back because we're talking about Chris Johnson who's you know in his 30s, Andre Ellington who has a history of injury problems. Um, David Johnson could very well be the running back uh, in Arizona at some point in the future um, this season. And with an offense as good as they're playing right now, that is a running back of value. Um, so it, it, I think it's safe to drop him, but at the same time, if you have a lot of depth and don't really need another RB, um, 
you can keep David Johnson. I mean, he's not completely without utility, but I just he's not a start right now, and he probably won't be for the foreseeable future. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we talked about running backs. We kind of went through that list. Um, wide receivers, I'll briefly mention, because um, there's some good options uh, that I see. Also, Devontae Freeman or Chris Johnson. Out of those two, Freeman, if I'm thinking of the right player. Um, the only reason I say that is because even though Chris Johnson had a really good week, yeah, even though Chris Johnson had a really good week, um, yeah, even though Chris Johnson had a really good week, uh, Andre Ellington's return is m closer um, than Andre Ellington's return is closer than the return of Atlanta's running back. Like Devontae Freeman is a spot starter for their starting running back, who is another not rookie, but uh, yeah, you know, is a rookie, Tevin Coleman. So. Tevin Coleman's still out. Um, Tevin Coleman, there's not really a great timetable on his return, whereas Andre Ellington has said he'll be ready for week four. So even if you're going by the reports and the death charts and the injury reports, Andre Ellington's much more closer than his return than Tevon Coleman, who just got injured last week. Um, he got Because he got injured in the Giants game. Uh, also... Chris Johnson, as good of a week as he has had, Andre Ellington is a known entity in Arizona, and he will be the starter. Whereas Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman, even before the injury, Freeman was getting some opportunities in that running offense. He was being utilized, whereas Chris Johnson was there. He was picked up out of street clothes, right before the season started, to serve as a backup. Devontae Freeman was drafted to be a running back in Atlanta for the foreseeable future, as was Tevin Coleman. So they're really working for the same job. So Freeman has a lot of uh, reason to you know, continue producing at this high pace to see if he can win the starting job. It's not nearly as much of a lock as Andre Ellington when he comes back to get his job back. So, for two reasons, Freeman's better. One, because he's got more time as a substitute, and two, because even once that time is over, he has more of a chance to have a bigger portion of the offense going forward. Um, so if you're looking for one, both in the short and long term, it's Freeman. Um, but going to back to the wide receiver position, and there's only one name I really want to talk about. Uh, Travis Benjamin, I had another good week. He's had touchdowns in every game so far of the season. He's a wide receiver who has big playability. Um, and we saw that with Johnny Mansell in particular on their deep ball connections. But even this week where he was able in the red zone to kind of get loose and get to the end zone. Um, he has a nose for the end zone. He's got a lot of touchdowns. I mean, he's not going to get a touchdown every week. It's just not how it works. <laughs> I mean, um, you have Des Bryant, who, you know, last year was almost guaranteed a touchdown. But other than that, and maybe uh, Odell Beckham Jr., there aren't many, many wide receivers who are consistently in the end zone. But Travis Benjamin seems to be around it. He's getting more touches as the league's progressing. Um, he's somebody to own. The other person that um, is kind of going under the radar, I mean, he's been mentioned by some of the expert analysis shows, is Marvin Jones. Uh, and this goes to your Andy Dalton um, pickup earlier. Uh, Andy Dalton has A.J. Green. Um, he has Tyler Eifert. Uh, but that second wide receiver position is Marvin Jones. Uh, Marvin Jones was injured all of last season. And that might not seem important, but that's probably why he's not owned. Uh, a lot of people tend to, you know, forget that, you know, right now, like, 
the traditional viewpoint of fantasy football is like, oh, if he got injured, if it was a season-ending injury, he's got to prove it to me. He's got to prove it to me he hasn't lost a step. Well, that's the reason I was able to get Adrian Peterson in the third round one year. And you saw what season he had after an injury. Now, not everybody's Adrian Peterson, obviously. But coming off of an injury isn't nearly as completely career-changing as we thought it used to be. Um, and Marvin Jones coming back and having a good game this weekend kind of kind of goes to show that he's going to be a talented receiver. And he was a receiver in 2013 who scored 10 touchdowns. So he's a receiver who can get open, who can get in the red zone, and he makes the Cincinnati Bengals offense a lot better. Also, because the Cincinnati Bengals are struggling on in the running game, he's probably going to see more targets because they're going to be in more third and long down distance situations. And Marvin Jones, more so than I think A.J. Green. A.J. Green is a very polished route runner and a very all-around good receiver. But Marvin Jones is a little bit more of a slot receiver. He's a little bit more possession-based. Um, so even though I think A.J. Green is probably a better possession receiver. But... Marvin Jones will be utilizing those third down situations when AJ Green might see double coverage. Um, so that is a player that I would own. That's a player that I'm personally going to be trying to pick up this week in a couple of leagues, um, especially because the wide receiver help seems really thin this year. And even if you look at the top wide receivers, there's a lot of names that you wouldn't expect. Like one player that I have in a couple of leagues who's actually been doing really well is Brandon Marshall. Um, Rashad Matthews is a player that um, is picked up, has been picked up a lot, and we like he was picked up a lot last week um, before he blew up. Um, at least he was picked up in my um, my money league, and I say it's my money league because it's the league that there's actual money on the line. Um, but yeah, he's kind of proven, even though the Dolphins are kind of still trying to figure out what they're doing on both sides of the ball. Um, Rashad Matthews has kind of like etched himself out of place. So if he's still available, which uh, at least in like, for instance, in this league, he's not. And in my money league, I know he's not. Um, but if he's still available, he's definitely somebody to target. Uh, just because he's getting most of the attention and most of the looks in a uh, situation that's kind of in flux. So if he can be the kind of steadying like rod for the Dolphins' offense and become a focal point, that's really good. And it will cost you again. It will it cost you next to nothing to pick him up for as a free agent, or even to trade for him at this point. He's still probably not a known commodity. If somebody has them, they probably didn't start them this week. Um, so they're probably not that tied to them. They might have seen his good week, but they also you can probably talk him out of it because of the Dolphins. The Dolphins don't have a lot of talent around him. so And because he's not a name that is jumping out at people, you still can probably go get him if he's picked up. But if he's available, yeah. Um, him or Marvin Jones? I would say probably Marvin Jones for me. But that's only because I like Cincinnati's offense more than I like the Dolphins. And that's kind of just trickle down. Like, I think that A.J. Green, being the star receiver that he is, is going to draw a lot of attention. You have Eifert, you have running backs with ability, even if the offensive line isn't giving them holes to, you know, run through. So you have a team with talent. And I just, I'd rather have a receiver that's good on a team with talent than a receiver that's good on a team that's lacking. Um, and the Dolphins are really lacking on the lines. Um, their offensive line is struggling, and their defensive um, linebacking core is really struggling. Um, so, I, I mean, Matthews is a good person to add, but he, he wouldn't be my first choice, but he's not that far down. And again, that's because the wide receiver class just doesn't have a lot of options. Uh, as you see, Percy Harvin, um, I mean... He's out there, he's available, he's not somebody I'd pick up. Uh, I mean, he's got a good matchup this weekend, but at the same time going forward, I don't know where Pershing Harvin's going to be. So Travis Benjamin, 
Jeremy Macklin's a name that you're probably more familiar with. He had a good game last night. Um, and he caught a touchdown pass, which Kansas City hasn't thrown to a wide receiver in, you know, ye- a ye- over a year. Um, I do not suggest picking up any St. Louis Rams player at the moment because, again, it's one of those situations of offense in flux, where's the talent? And it might be at the running back position because they have two very good running backs that are getting off of injury. Um, but... Like in this league, Pierre Garçon's available. He's worth an ad just because of his talent. Um, and Deshaun Jackson still being out for a number of weeks. Um, he'll get targeted. Uh, he's in Washington's offense, and I feel like Washington has to do something. Um, I don't know if Cousins will be the long-term solution. They might turn to McCoy. They might go back to RG3. I doubt they go back to RG3, but they might turn to McCoy in the near future. Um, but, like I was saying, the running back, the, the wide receiver position is kind of scant in terms of what there is available. Um, so you've got to kind of take what you can get. Also, even in the own wide receivers, there's a lot of wide receivers that are underperforming or not performing to their draft situation. Um, so... If you have a good wide receiver and people are, you know, looking for trades, um, aim high. Just keep that in mind to aim high. Really make sure you're getting the best you, the best available player that you can. Because uh, there's a there's a lot of names out there. There's a lot of players who um, drafted somebody with high expectations and they're just not performing. Um, so you're gonna have to you're if you have a dry receiver that is performing week in and week out, you have a Julio Jones, you have an Odell Beckham, you you have somebody um, like a Larry Fitzgerald who you got late but is still performing admirably and is in good offense, hold on to them or you know, ask for the world. Um, and make them come up in what they're offering you. Um the final kind of position, we talked about quarterbacks, we talked about running backs. Tight ends, there's not really much to say. The only kind of thing that kind of kind of emerged this week was Gary Barnage in Cleveland, who saw a lot of targets, who you know scored a touchdown pass, and as long as McNown's the quarterback there, um, might have some utility. But again, uh, the tight end position is really all over the place right now. So uh, if you're looking for somebody. Barnage is good. Um, some of the other names in here, Crocky Gilmore went out hurt. Austin Stephen Safaron Jenkins of Tampa Bay is out for four weeks, four more weeks, I think. Um, Ladarius Green did not play this weekend, and Antonio Gates is coming back uh, in week five. So he has only one more week of you know real viability, and he might be hurt. Jerry Cook didn't suit up this weekend. So, I mean, even if you look at the free agent pool of tight ends, there's not a lot of useful players and utility there. Um, Again, tight end position won't make or break you, but uh, there was a run on tight ends, at least in a couple of my leagues last weekend. Jordan Reed being picked up, Eric Ebron going, Crocky Gilmore, not in this league, but in another couple of leagues going. So there's just a lot. There was a lot of injury news in the tight end um, last week, going into this week. So there was a lot of scrambling, and this week I, I didn't. There most of the injuries that we did hear of um, coming out coming going into this week are kind of good with tight end effort. Yeah, I like Bennett a lot. Even though Chicago's struggling, um, just because struggling quarterbacks tend to lead on tight ends, and Chicago's in situations where they're down so much they have to throw. Um, uh, no, I don't think Reed's better than those two. Uh, I think Bennett Bennett's the better is a better tight end than Reed, um, at least in Chicago's situation. Washington, even though they're bad, are still going to be in games, um, and. Really, anybody's better than Kirk Cousins at this point. Uh, Eifert is in a good offense. He's in an offense with playmakers around him. So, um, 
I mean, I know we put up zero points this week, but that's kind of an anomaly. Um, I'd, I'd rather have Eifert or Bennett rather than Reed. Uh, Reed's a good possession guy. He'll probably get you 80 yards a game, but he's not really targeted in the red zone, and the Redskins' offense kind of breaks down in the red zone. The Redskins are leaning a lot on their running backs, so if anything, Jordan Reed's stuff is going to come off of play action. Where they'll either look deep to Pierre Garçon or um, Pierre Garçon in a slant. I mean, there's just a lot of reasons that Reed is not the go-to guy in Washington. And Washington has a couple of mouths to feed in the backfield. And once Deshaun Jackson gets back, it's even less likely that Reed will be useful. I mean, he's a good tight end, and I would, if you're hurting at tight end, I I would pick him up. I think I did pick him up in one league last weekend because I had um, an injury at tight end. I had Steven Seferin Jenkins. I've had him since the beginning of the year. Same reason, uh, rookie quarterbacks lean on tight ends. Um, and it, it worked out week one really well. Because um, he had like two touchdown passes in garbage time. Second week he had a decent game. Nothing great, but like five, six points. Just, you know, tight end usefulness. 60 yards. Um, targeted once in the red zone. I think they ended up kicking a field goal. He, it was a drop or broken up pass. But uh, he's useful. He was useful. Uh, and then I picked up Reed going into the Giants matchup. Because uh, the Giants linebacking core, even uh, last week especially, wasn't, you know, together. Uh, they're still struggling in the linebacking core. Um, their defensive line is getting back, is getting better. Uh, their secondary, other than their safety position, hasn't really been a problem. Um, it's their linebackers, and their linebackers making reads, and their safety inexperience. They have a rookie safety, um, and then they have a safety who they picked up off the street in Merriweather. Um, so uh, that's why I went with Reed. And it worked out okay. He had a good statistical um, game, but in terms of flow, he's just not going to be utilized a lot. Um, and that kind of leads to defenses, just to kind of go through. And defenses, you really like to, you should look at your matchup, um, just who they're playing against. Um, and what's the upcoming week look like. So we'll go to schedule, and we'll just go to the regular season, um, and we'll look at uh, the upcoming week. So in week four, the Thursday night game, Ravens-Steelers. Uh, in my mind, the games that I would look for a defense, ironically, I would look at the Raiders' defense, because even though they're at Chicago, Chicago's offense has been putting up no points in the past few weeks. Um, and the Raiders are much better than people give them credit for. Um, they have a balanced offense. It might not be a great offense, but it's balanced. Um, they have the ability to, you know, get ahead of Chicago, make Chicago chase the game. Um, they have a Hall of Fame safety in Charles Woodson. Even though he's lost a step, he's still making reads. He still got an interception last week to seal the game. Um, I think the Bears commit enough turnovers that the Raiders become viable. Um, and the Bears just don't are struggling to score points right now. Alshon Jeffrey's still out. Um, so they're, they're without their receiving weapon. They don't have Brandon Marshall. He's, you know catching all the touchdowns in New York for the Jets. Um, so they're just really struggling. And because they're getting out of games, they can't rely on Forte. Um, so I, I think the Raiders make a solid spot start if you need somebody to pick up. Uh, the Colts, whose defense isn't great, are worth adding at home against the Jaguars, who struggled to score points. Um, a long kind of, maybe not too long, but a long distance spot start for me personally would be to start the Chargers, even though their defense isn't that good, against the Browns. Um, and that can go either way uh, because the Browns have a good defense, but they might not be available in your league. But if they are, they're an okay spot start against the Chargers. I, that game just looks on paper to be a low scoring game. Um, 
The Falcons' defense, I've seen people talk about it, but... Do you hold on to a defense through most of the season, or do you pick up a drop? Maybe? I usually stream defenses. I usually stream defenses. Um, this season, actually, I've been running with Carolina in a couple of leagues, just because I've been looking for a streaming defense, and they keep having good matchups. Um, and I even think this week, Carolina had... Yeah, Carolina's pulling the Bucks. Like, it, the past few weeks, Carolina's had matchups where I've just... It just looked like they were better. Um, and they're 3-0, and but they, uh, they're also... The first week, they gave me, I want to say, like, 20-something points in a standard league. Um, they're just... They've just been really providing, you know, points. I played them last week, and they didn't do great. Um, I expected a little bit more from them because New Orleans didn't have Drew Brees. Um, but... It's really matchup based, and they started the season with Jacksonville, Houston without Arian Foster, and an uh, unsure quarterback situation, and then New Orleans with an unsure quarterback situation. Then they go to Tampa, whose offense is iffy at best, um, and they get Luke Kuechly back supposedly this week. So they also got Jaron Allen from the Bears. I mean, if anything, it bolsters their pass rush. I know Jared Allen's not the same player he was for a while, but uh, I've been I've been running with Carolina for a while. Uh, but I usually, and in the past, have always streamed defenses um, based on who's available and what's the best matchup. Because it's all usually there's somebody who's obviously the worst team in the league. That's not really the case this year. I mean, the Bears are pretty horrible, so that's one of the reasons. Um, it's probably worthwhile to go at that matchup right now. I mean, without Jay Culler, without Alshon Jeffrey, I mean, there's really nothing there. And the Raiders have a decent defense. So, uh, I mean, if you're looking for a streaming defense, my pick of the week would be the Raiders. Um, but, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Unless you guys have any other questions, um, I don't really have much else. This is, like I was saying, this or at the beginning of the show. Um, this show is kind of still in flux. Um, definitely having out Tuesdays. Fridays, obviously, has been pretty standard. The start time is at 6. We've, you know, kind of been doing it uh, every week at that time. It's been working well. Um, this week, I kind of got into the point where I can say that the Tuesday shows are going to be at 7.30. Um, it's going to start around that time, so if you're here that time, you'll catch it. Um, I also mentioned that there uh, because of some of my, I mean, my family being in the hospital this weekend, I didn't get to update the overlay because I'm going to add the YouTube page, the Twitter account so we can get questions in and do a lot more stuff. Um, just, you know, add, you know, stuff to the show. Um so that there's more on Tuesday to talk about other than just waiver wire. Um, because Friday's show tends to have enough in it to discuss. Like We talk about the upcoming weekend. We talk about the game on Thursday night. Um, and there's just a lot we go over. Uh, whereas this week, like talking about the Monday night game is fine, but the fantasy week's over, so it doesn't really have an impact on you. Um, we, we'd, we'd just be talking about the game that we watched. <laughs> Whereas the Thursday night game has fantasy implications because you're still in that fantasy week. You might have started guys who under or overperformed, and that might tweak your roster a little bit. So those are that's kind of that rationale. But um, I again, once again, every time I've done this show, um, we've had people watching, and that is really I'm just surprised. I'm happy that people were coming out enjoying talking about fantasy football and I thank you the other guy on Twitch um, Fred ex 919 who's lurking in the chat somewhere um, drinking if he watches this on YouTube or on the broadcast um, so I hope you guys have a successful fantasy week and I will see you on Friday um, Friday I mentioned early at the beginning of the stream I'm gonna be out of town but I'm going to do this, um, the Friday show, in some way, shape, or form. Um, even if it's, like, jerry-rigged and, 
you know, off my phone or off something. I want to do the Friday show. Um, just because that's the show that's been so consistent. <laughs> uh, but I really appreciate everybody who, you know, is here, watches the show, watches the video on demand. And I hope you guys have a good fantasy week and a good rest of your week in general. So have a good day, have a good night, and I'll see you Friday.